Welcome to the Autorama Theater at the WCBS Broadcast Center. I'm Marla Diamond, and today we are talking about the stigma surrounding mental illness. Joining us is Eric Cusin, who is launching a national movement to shine the spotlight on depression, anxiety, and sports. Eric suffered his own bout of depression and anxiety during his time working for the Florida Panthers. And after getting the help he needed, he decided to shed a spotlight on the issue. And also on our panel, thanks so much for joining us, Amanda Beard, Olympic gold medal swimmer and uh, cyclist Tyler Hamilton, who rode the Tour de France with Lance Armstrong. Theo Fleury, well known in this area. You did play for the Rangers for a little bit and uh, had an illustrious career with the NHL and also Olympic swimmer Anita Nall. Thanks so much for joining us to talk about this important subject. Um, you've all shared stories in the past of your struggles with mental illness and are now a part of this national movement that Eric has created. Your campaign is titled, We're All a Little Crazy, which is uh, certainly something that most of us can relate to. <laughs> but you're focused on something that is uh, very real and frankly can be debilitating for millions of Americans, Eric. Yeah, and Marla, it's so interesting the way that you introduced the program because you mentioned that it was a program related to mental illness. And I think that's a big reason why when you hear the name, uh, we came up with a name like that is because when we hear that term or when we talk about that subject, it's been ingrained in our head for so long to say mental illness. But those of us who've been through it, we know that there's a certain stigma related to that term being mentally ill. It's a very exclusive instead of inclusive term because there's the people who have an illness and then everyone else. So the problem is when we say mental illness, we're talking about the people who are diagnosed a certain way and then all the other people who don't wanna be considered in that category. And so they don't ask for help. And so the power of uh, all the folks up here coming out with their story and, and I'm humble that they would come and they would be a part of this is that they're willing to say, no, you know what? All of us go through it. We're gonna change this, we're gonna flip it around. It's we are, the crazy is meant to be disruptive. It is meant to turn heads. There is a little bit of a fun play to it. And I think at the end of the day, it's we're taking crazy and we're turning it on its head and we're saying crazy is the new normal because we're all that way. One in five um, Americans suffer from some sort of anxiety or depression. I'm looking at Theo because that is the math that is out there that's the common knowledge but i think the truth matter is would we say five and five yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and it, it's it, and, it, um, it, yeah i'm sorry and and in, in the sports world um there's you put so much pressure on yourself uh to be perfect and we as viewers expect you to perform um is it very common in the sports world to have these illnesses especially anxiety over performance any one of you can pick it up. Um, I, I'll start. I'm Amanda. Um, I think it's super uh, common, but I think the problem is that we don't even know that we are around each other and we're going through those things, you know, because there's such this, um, as an athlete, you want to be perfect, you want to perform, you want to live, you want to keep creeping to the top. You don't want anybody to look at you differently or think of, hey, you're, that person's going through that. So it, I've always felt like it was a weakness. So if I talked about some of the issues or some of the things I was feeling or going through, I would have, I always thought my competitors would think that I was um, weaker than them. So I always wanted to hold it in. And, and then when I actually ended up opening up, everybody around me was going through very similar things as I was. And it was, it was very eye-opening for me personally. In your case, it was going from sort of uh, being a teenager to being a young adult and not, you know, going through puberty and not uh, being able to get the numbers that you used to get in your, your competition. So that led to bulimia in your case. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was just one, one little <laughs> detail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Theo, you, you have such a uh, compelling story that you wrote about uh, in your book, mm -hmm. um, and it's such a sad story of uh, abuse when you were a teenager mm -hmm. by your youth hockey coach, and uh, you must have really felt very alone. Oh, yeah. There's no question. Um, you know, you feel that, you know, you're the only person that this is happening to yeah. or it's going, you're going through, and, and uh, so for many years, I felt very isolated, I felt very alone, and uh, you know, 
it's hard to believe 14 years ago I had a fully loaded pistol in my mouth ready to pull the trigger and end my life because I was completely exhausted from living in emotional pain and suffering and I tried absolutely everything on the planet to get rid of this feeling and uh, you know sort of divine intervention came in and and uh, it allowed me to take the gun and throw it in the desert I was living in Santa Fe New Mexico at the time and that's when I started on this journey of healing and 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 um, when I finished playing hockey you know all I had was a grade 12 diploma that was it and still had more than half my life left to live and I was looking for purpose and so I wrote this book this autobiography and told my story of, of um, my trauma experience and what happened was I completely got run over by people who were seeking me out saying oh my god you told my story you told my story me too me too me too and and uh, you know that was in 2009 and we've had over 600,000 people either directly or indirectly say those two words and and so you know it, it it has given me purpose and it's given me a reason to get out of bed every day and and it's and it's alleviated a lot of you know those feelings of desperation and loneliness and anxiousness and all those things and and so um it's really really important that you know the stigma attached to mental illness or whatever you want to call it is is that when you ask for help it does not mean you're weak it means you're a person of tremendous character and courage and and all of that stuff and I don't know why it got flipped around yeah. but we need to change that and reflip it around because five out of five people have some sort of mental illness and so it's really really important and that's why we're all here and, and want to be a part of this is because we know uh, how difficult it was for us and now we have a platform and a very loud voice and we're going to use that voice and anita um what brought you to this movement when eric gave you the call i kind of came in here on the tail end and i'm so excited that i was able to because it fits me to a t what what we're doing here and uh, for me i always say i grew up in front of the world i went through puberty in front of the world in a swimsuit okay and as a female that's that's a little tricky to do. Yeah. Um, I'm sure for boys also. And I felt the, the, the interesting dichotomy of being a professional athlete, especially for me at the age of 15, was here I was going to school in the daytime with, with just like my friends, my regular people. And then in the evening I had this thing I was doing or in the morning before practice and I felt really isolated because I didn't fit into any group. You don't fit into a group at school when you're doing this thing that's so different from, from everyone else. And then for me, I also had a lot of um, health issues that ended up leading to depression for me. So that's what brought me, um, if my background is in that, that brought me to this group. And, and uh, Tyler, you got caught up in the whole doping scandal, Lance Armstrong, um, and kind of got dragged into it as, as well. Um, that had to have been very, very difficult to, you know, have to admit to that and kind of give up everything that you lived for. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, the the doping angle on the, on in cycling was uh was a, was super tricky. Um, you, you you basically lived a you know a dual a, you had two faces you know the face that everyone thought you were and then the true face which was a doper and, and a liar and uh, yeah that took its toll on me you know. I was diagnosed with clinical depression, I believe it was 2002 or 2003, during the highlight of my career, you know. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, winning some of the biggest races in the world, you know, ringing the opening bell on Wall Street, nationally televised interviews, stuff like that. Insane. But yeah, on the inside, I was a mess, you know. It was like I had a lead blanket. Sometimes, I remember in the off season, uh, just having a hard time getting out of bed, you know. Eric and I spoke about this a little bit and called it the lead blanket. And finally, you know, with the support of my family, they asked me to go, you know, see a doctor. And yeah, sure enough, I was diagnosed. And um, I have some family history with depression. And um, yeah, but that made the biggest, you know, difference in the world. Like uh, going to sp speak to a doctor, then taking some medication for a while. Um, that helped a lot. And then, you know, now with exercise, diet, um, you know, some talk therapy once in a while, 
you know, life is good. It's changed a lot. So, Eric, these folks are showing that there is a way out, but mm -hmm. when you're stuck in it, and as you discussed, and being on some cocktails, medication, and, mm -hmm. you know, you think the doctors know what's best, of course, um, it is so hard to get out of it and to get out of it on your own. I mean, you can have all the support in the world, and we know you have a wonderful family, mm -hmm. um, but y you yourself have to do the work to get out of it. And even if you do the work, the unfortunate thing is the answers aren't always apparent. At least I can speak for a living in the U.S. And I know we, this is actually a global alliance. So this is an epidemic around the world. And we have athletes and celebrities from all over. But the, the issue is, Marla, that we grow up, at least in Western society, and we were talking about this last night, the first time we're ever faced with a sickness is something like strep throat or bronchitis. We go to the doctor, we're given this magic pill that's a um, antibiotic, and all of a sudden we feel better. And so why wouldn't then our brains think, okay, we learned how to get better this way when we're feeling off with this other thing. Okay, it's mental health related, but what's the difference? I take a pill and I get better. That becomes prevalent and I can tell you from my own experience, I chased that correct cocktail of drugs from experts without calling their names out, but from the top um, hospitals in New York area and each one of them kept giving me a new cocktail of drugs. And that ultimately wasn't what healed me. What healed me was the things that uh, Tyler was talking about is yoga, meditation, mindfulness, uh, breathing practices. These are the things that actually cleanse the central nervous system as opposed to medications, none of us are gonna be up here saying medications aren't useful. There's people who certainly need them. For some of us who got better through natural practices, the medication gave us a little bit of a buoyancy to then be able to do the natural practices that we need. But I think we're at a place right now where even if we have the resources and the comfort, like you said, to go search, it's not so readily known that there are these other treatment method, uh, methods that instead of being considered other, should be treated should be considered the treatment methods am i correct yes yeah. well and i think what's really important is that because trauma mental health and addiction are sort of all attached together you know that has to become a part of your daily routine is where you're taking care of yourself because before we never took care of ourselves we were so focused on being these high performing performance athletes that and the pressure was so great to perform and, and win gold medals and, you know, all this stuff that we've lost self, right? And so in order to heal, you got to get back yourself. And that means self-forgiveness. That means self-love. That means eating well, sleeping well, taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you're feeling whatever you're feeling, you got to talk about it. Like, it, it's essential that you have to talk about it because if you don't, you know, when you start to stuff all that stuff, then you get all kinds of physical symptoms like cancer mm -hmm. and all these things because the trauma has to be stored somewhere in your body. And so, you know, it's just a never ending cycle yeah. of, and so it, that's why, you know, this is so exciting and so great to be a part of it is that we've all been through some sort of, uh, you know, rock bottom, the proverbial rock bottom, and, and we've climbed our way out of it and we found a way to manage our own lives uh, one, you know, one day at a time or 24 hours at a time. So um, what is the target audience here, Eric, and, and any of you can answer it, and how will you be helping in the effort to kind of spread the message that we are all a little crazy? So going back to the stat of one, one in five versus five in five, our target, our target audience is everyone who lives on this planet. And I think you'll see in some of the thematics that we're going to be coming out with uh, as a campaign, it's all about that. It doesn't matter where you live in this world. Traumas affect us. We all go through similar life experiences. That being said, the beauty of coming together as an alliance is that each of us have had our own unique experiences with respect to trauma or with respect to mental health difficulties. And so... Whereas in some cases it might be related to um, situations when we were younger and, and dealing with abuse. In other cases, it might be the loss of purpose after we've reached a goal or um, something that we've been going after is now taken away from us because we're no longer competing in that. So I think the beauty of all these folks telling their stories is there's an analogy that anyone who hears their stories could be able to equate. So for example, when Theo is telling his story about 
performance athletes, was an athlete back in the day, so don't give me a hard time, but um, I'm thinking of in terms of like, okay, my competition was trying to be the, the best sports executive. That was my competition the same way that for them it was winning a Stanley Cup. So you can relate to everyone out there if you hear their stories and say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Mm -hmm. And we want to tell each of these stories so that on our website, people can go and say, there's this library of all these folks coming out. Which one relates to me? Wow, there's someone else who's going through this. And that person was ringing the bell <laughs> and was at the top of their career when that was going on. Wow, I would never have thought that. Mm -hmm. And that's really the power of it. All about lifting the stigma. Um... And it, it took, uh, Amanda, you several years to realize that the trauma that you went through in childhood was causing your outbursts and, you know, the, the issues that you had. Um, so, you know, what would you say to a young woman who is in that position, you know, competitive of sports, um, to sort of avoid the path that you took? I think it's hard to speak for each individual what would work or what they're going through, what the best path um, for them would be. For me personally, it was surrounding myself with the right people um, and really opening my eyes to talking about who I was and what I was going through and my really disruptive behavior that I was displaying for everybody. Um, and then talking about it and seeing these people not run away. That was my thought. Like, I'm going to tell these people who I am, what I'm feeling, what I do to myself, and they're going to run out that door. And nobody did. They mm -hmm. all were there to help find the right path for me to become a healthier, happier version of who I was supposed to be and not be this person um, who was basically pretending to be very happy. So for me, it was surrounding myself with that right support group. And really, I had it around me. I just had to um, open up and, and discover that. Right. And Anita, did you experience some of the, some of the same? Yes, things? definitely. I was I was just thinking it kind of triggered a, a memory for me. Um, so I won an Olympic gold medal at the age of, I had just turned sixteen, and I was supposed to win three golds. And what happened for me was um, I remember touching the wall in my main event, and I look back at the scoreboard. I knew that the girls had like mowed me down at the very end of my race, and I remember touching it and just you can see if you see the picture, you just see like overwhelm and shock and just almost like disgust with myself because I had such high goals. And what happened for me was I got sick the next year. I got very, very sick. And I was seeking out help over and over again with doctors that were not giving me any relief. And what ultimately happened for me was my depression came in because I was almost like told that I wasn't sick, like there's nothing wrong with you. Our tests don't show anything wrong with you. And so for me, um, my, my story is just slightly different from Amanda's, but I started then it was like, well, I guess my swimming career is over. Now who am I? And I had lost myself for so long in that time period. I had to have a definite uh, rediscovery period, which I love now. I, I absolutely love the life I've created. And um, wouldn't have trade those experience for anything because it took me to my work. What I do now is with yeah. nutrition. And so right. it brought me to that place because exactly. I ended up finding that that was the healing I needed. Yeah. But that's why everybody's different up here has found that there are different paths and the healing, healing paths have, have come at different, in different ways for all of us. Okay. Eric, to wrap up, can mm -hmm. you tell us um, about how we can support your cause and um, what you'll be doing from you know, here on in? Absolutely. So our website is www.weareallalittlecrazy.org. We can't do a conjunction or we would have done we're. Um, that website is going to have a collection of the stories of all the Alliance members, expert practitioners, one expert in each area of mindfulness, meditation, yoga. So it's not overwhelming, but there's a resource center. And then we're going to be asking people to submit their stories of them coming out and sharing what has helped them based on the fact that they feel buoyed up by reading the stories of everyone on the site. So we want to make a basically a tribe of people, which is everyone in the world who is a part of this, to feel like I'm in that group too, and we're all in that group together. And if we can create that open society, then we'll have accomplished what we want to accomplish. Talk about tonight. Oh. 
do you want to hear? Yeah, you, you have the launch party yeah, tonight. Yeah, well, listen, we were talking long term, so um, we do have a launch party tonight at the DL, which is on 95 Delancey Street. Um, so good friends up here, and then a number of other uh, celebrities like John Starks, favorite here in New York. Uh, but I think it's less about the celebrity and more about the fact that these great people are coming together and they took time out of their busy lives and their schedules to say enough is enough. We've told our stories, but yet there's umbrella messages that are out there. They're not breaking through. And together, if we are consistent with our message through an alliance that continues on, we're going to make that difference. So I would encourage anyone you know who wants to come um, are, you can still get tickets on our website, though we're going to have to close it soon because we're close to capacity. But we would love to see you tonight at 6.30 if you can and um, be a part of this alliance, which is going to continue to grow. Okay. Well, uh, Anita and Theo and Tyler and uh, Amanda, thank you so much. And Eric, um, good luck with your new effort. It's definitely needed. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marla Diamond.